Oh, hello. Today I am going to be talking about unique books. And this was actually one of the hardest lists I've ever tried to come up with for y'all because I often say that I think that there are very few books that I would consider to be genuinely unique in some respect. That's not a knock. I this is a pet peeve of mine, so we'll just go on a little mini rant. I see authors a lot really trying to push the idea of like, my book is the only one that does this, mine is the special one, mine is this, mine is that. It is very hard to actually write a genuinely unique book because humans have been writing novels for a very long time and thousands upon thousands of them get published every year with the rise of self-publishing that has only gone up. It is very hard to write a book that is genuinely unique. What is special about books is the combination of of recurring tropes that we all know with the author's own particular voice and characters, how they take things that are not unique and make them special for us all over again. That being said, I did come up with a few books that I think are not, none of these I would say I can think of zero parallels to them or zero books like them, but they are books that I can think of much fewer read-alikes for. And actually looking at this, a lot of times it is down to the writing tone that the author executes for the genre that they're working in. But anyway, this is my attempt to come up with a list of books that I think I could fairly call unique to some degree or another. And uh, maybe we'll start with the books that I don't have in physical form and we'll work our way from there. Okay, the first one that came to mind for me was Cold Comfort Farm by Stella Gibbons. And this is one where tone-wise, this is a book that is unique from its era to what I have read. And that is because this was written, I believe, in the 20s or 30s, first half of the 20th century, let's say. And it is so, it feels very Dada almost, like it's so wacky. We've got this kind of bonkers family living on Cold Comfort Farm. We have our plucky protagonist coming in after she becomes an orphan. She goes to live with this family who are her distant relations. There are these family secrets that no one wants to refer to. There is a kind of a Heathcliff type character. We have this sort of ethereal, almost like manic pixie dream 20s gal. I don't know. And then there's something nasty in the woodshed, which is this recurring thing. It's just got a lot going on in it that I would not expect to be there from a book of its era. So tonally, it is unique to what I would describe as the modern classics that I have read. Another wacky one is the most recent book uh, that I've read that made this list and actually inspired me to go ahead and make this list. And that is Dial A for Aunties by Jesse Q. Sutanto. And this book, again, has a kind of wackiness to it that I think is unusual. It reminds me very much of sort of like a telenovela or K-drama, kind of very melodramatic tone to it. It is sold as a rom-com. I'm not sure that's actually what it is. It's basically like a family melodrama with a lot of over-the-top campy elements and a romance thrown in, also a murder mystery. Just like the combo of elements in this one, I think are pretty unique. Then Meg Tilly, this is another example of just like things getting brought together in a way that I think is pretty unusual. Meg Tilly writes these romantic suspenses that have romantic suspense plots, but they read more like a small town romance, like a contemporary romance. So there are these very intense murdery plots but tonally it reads like a Susan Mallory or a Jill Chavez kind of thing. So imagine like a Hallmark movie combined with, I don't know, like the Pelican Brief or something. <laughs> It's a very interesting mashup of tone and elements in a book. And then the last one that I don't have in physical form is Transcendence by Shay Savage, I believe is the author. And this is a time travel historical romance where our hero is not quite a Neanderthal or a Cro-Magnum, but he's some sort of like pre-human who is is basically human with the exception that his brain cannot, like does not have the facility to actually understand complicated language. Like he will never be able to do that. But we are in his point of view the entire time and a girl from, you know, 2015 or whatever, accidentally goes back in the past. He catches her in a hunting pit and his tribe 
tribe has all been wiped out, so he thought that he would just like die alone, and now he has his lady, and he refers to himself as Ed, and her name is Elizabeth, but he can't say it, so he just calls her Be. And it is a very interesting take, a historical romance with a caveman. I think that it wouldn't work if he wasn't the most cinnamon rolly of cavemen you can imagine. Like he, all he wants to do is make Be happy. He's so excited to have a companion again. He's so excited to be able to put babies in her. It does the thing that actually Ruby Dixon does this a lot in her sci-fi books when the two people don't speak the same language, where we're always in his point of view and he can't understand Be, but it kind of has what he's hearing as noises in a way where you can read it and understand the English she's saying. It manages to communicate consent pretty well. It is a very interesting project of a book. I don't think it's a perfect book, but it's very ambitious. And I've never read a romance quite like it. Okay, so those were all the ones I didn't have in physical form. So we will just start to make our way through this little pile. First of all is a book that I read, I think either at the end of last year or the beginning of this one, and that is The Girl from Shadow Springs by Ellie Cipher. I think that this is unique in the sense of it's two very different kind of vibes that go together into one book surprisingly well, which is it is described, the back always describes this as the revenant meets true grit with a magical twist. So it is that. It's like a survivalist YA fantasy set on like kind of the frontier, but a very snowy, like it's a frontier covered in snow. So it's that, but it's also really a Snow Queen fairy tale retelling. And I just think those two things together, I've never seen those ideas brought into one book. And also the writing in this is really, really, really nice. So just like the the kind of resulting atmospheric take on a YA fantasy is unique to my reading. Then we have a, it's sold as a thriller, but I think it's better thought of as just a character study. Jane Doe by Victoria Helen Stone. This has the woman as sociopath trope, but we are purely in her point of view. She is the hero, the protagonist, and she's on a revenge plot. And again, I've seen elements of this in other books, but the way that this gets brought together and how distinctive the voice is for the titular character, I think creates a reading experience that is unique to what I have read. Then we have Love Lettering by Kate Claiborne. And this is again, another one where just like tonally, I think that this is really interesting, because it reads like upmarket, like book club kind of fiction. But it is with a rom com plot, which I just don't think we've seen a lot of. So this one, and then I guess really this and Love at First, those are the two I've read from her, both of them have that quality. So I just think her writing and the kind of tone she brings to the types of plots she writes is unique. Then Alatsaway, this is another very recent read. This is really hard to describe, which is part of why I felt like it des deserved a place on this list. Ostensibly, this is like a middle grade urban fantasy with um, kind of like with Lilipin Apache magic or like beliefs as the basis of the magic system. And it is that, but it reads very much a contemporary, like a middle grade contemporary in terms of its tone. I think the places that it goes are unexpected. It almost reads sort of like the Scooby-Doo. It has like the Scooby-Doo gang plot. And yet it's more beautiful and serious than that. I don't know. This was a really interesting experience to, I think this is a book that's really hard to describe what it's trying to do. I think you kind of just have to read it. And I've never seen specifically like a middle grade book go for what this seems to be going for. Then we've got two in a row that I think execute on a whimsical or sort of snarky or quirky tone. So first The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune, I think is one of the only adult books that has successfully achieved a whimsical quality to it that does not verge into cutesiness or tweeness. Somehow he really manages to straddle that line and it makes the book just so lovely and warm without it feeling sort of saccharine. I don't know how he does it, but he does. And also 
Chauncey forever. Chauncey has my heart. And then The Rook by Daniel O'Malley. I feel like The Rook manages to be very kind of quirky, like I'm not like other books kind of a vibe in a way that actually works. I think a lot of times that comes off as very like smug or self-satisfied. Cough, the magician's cough. I think that this actually pulls that tone off very nicely. I think it's a weird book categorized in terms of its genre because it's really a mystery plot, but it's sort of urban fantasy, sort of sci-fi maybe. I don't know. It's, it's a unique book in terms of the elements it puts together, but also the tone that the author is a effectively able to strike. This is one of my all-time favorite books. I absolutely love this book. And similarly, another one of my all-time favorite books is The Library of Mount Char by Scott Hawkins. Now, this is one of the only ones on this list that I think has a very clear read-alike title, and that is Middle Game by Shauna McGuire. But I think that this is the far superior book because it is able to be incredibly dark and it manages to execute a level of disorientation that feels like the author has full control of it. Whereas I think middle game does not have that. This is, you know, the gods walk among us, but are, is it the gods or is it actually like science based? We don't know. It's, you know, trying to murder God. Yeah, it's a very interesting plot that you don't know what's going on in it for a good 40% of the book. And then things start to come together and it just starts like boom, boom, boom. Not a book for everyone, but it is a book that I think is fairly unique, even though it does have some read-alike titles to it. I think this is the superior product and therefore manages to actually be unique. So with that being said, those are the books that I could think of that I felt like were unique. Definitely let me know what you thought of any of these or any books that have been unique to your reading experience in the comments below. And yeah, I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below, along with a link to where I got my glasses if you were interested in that. Uh, and I think that that will do it for me. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today, and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!